High achievers in life are able to master t their time management and optimize their personal productivity. What is it that high achievers know that other people may not? And how can you up your game? Today, I'm going to talk about important facts and hacks about time that may help you elevate your productivity and your results and your happiness and your success. So I am so glad to welcome you here. Time management is one of the core skills of high achievers. I have a high, achiever, a high achievers club for some of my clients. It is one of the programs that I have. And in that group, we talk about a set of components and skills. And one of the very important core skills is time management. So again, I wanna welcome all the people I see joining in. Welcome, welcome. Uh, and again, time management is really an essential, really, really important skill that all busy people should know. I want people to really feel that they're in control of their time and that their time is not stressful but comfortable for them. So one of the most common comments that I get from clients who come to me, busy people who come to me, and especially busy working mothers is, I don't have enough time, I'm so busy. I'm always trying to figure out how am I going to get everything done. So again, time is really important. It's a tool that I definitely want you to have those facts and hacks in your hands, in your armamentarian, so that you can go through your life and feel productive and in control of your time and your activities. So I wanna start with a few truisms about time, just some facts that we can't change. One is that we all are here, we all come here with 24 hours in a day. Even the richest people can't buy more time. So I tell the people that I work with, it's really, although people call it time management, it's not really time management. We all have the same time. We all have the same 24 hours. It's us management. It's how we manage our time. And I teach my clients to start thinking about it that way. The f fault or the responsibility is not in the clock, it's not in the time, it's not in the number of hours. It's how effectively and responsibly and regularly we keep track of how we use our time. The next truism is that time is important to everyone. And that's why we should think and plan how we handle our time. And time is fleeting, it passes by. Once it's gone, it moves. And so we want to be, I want to encourage people to be responsible and to think in advance. And the way I describe it is that time is precious. We have our lifetime as a gift and I value the time that I have been given and I want to use it responsibly in my work, with my family, with my community so that I know that I've used it as best I can. And I always tell people to plan time in advance because thinking in advance really helps you plan out and make sure that you use your time well. So I want to encourage you today, think about things you do and steps that help make you productive. And one is planning in advance, certainly a good calendar system. And I'm not going to talk about calendars today because that's a really general topic. I'm gonna to talk about more advanced topics today than just calendars. I also want you to think about, secondly, things that keep you productive. Not just things that make you productive, but things that keep you productive. Things that cut stress, 
so that allow you to use your time more peacefully and that you f and help you feel more in control of your time and things that help you conserve your energy like having a good night's sleep like taking some rest breaks during the day uh, like eating well like good nutrition that can help solve your energy lags and keep you with good energy through your day and those rest breaks that can keep you with good energy through your day and finally i want you to think about some some time drainers time wasters that where we can clog up your time so that you don't lose time um, one of the common time drainers that I talk to people about often is how often we check our emails. The research and some studies have shown that if you add up the time people look at their, their uh, emails over the day, it can come to two, I saw a study that said 2.6 hours a day. And you don't realize it because you look here and there you look here and you answer a couple of emails and then that makes you think oh I better send this to someone else and before you know it it's 15 minutes here and 10 minutes here and by the time you end it up end up by the end of the day it's a couple of hours I tell people it's really more efficient to schedule two times during the day once during your morning not necessarily first thing in the morning I tell people you want to save first thing in the morning if you are most energetic for your most important, most difficult project of your day. You want to conserve your best energy time for your most important project, not just answering email. And again, I suggest you do it, schedule it twice a day. That is usually adequate for most people. Certainly, if your job requires more, feel free to schedule more in. But leaving it up to random chance to say, all right, I just finished this project, let me check if I got any emails, is really putting time on somebody else's control and saying, okay, you sent me an email, I'll answer you now, rather than using your time productivity for your needs and your agenda and then getting to your emails when you get to them. So I want you to think about how you schedule your time. I also want you to remember that free time is important too. And that's one of the things that I consider advanced. People usually schedule, well, for work, I'm gonna put this on my calendar. For my community, I need this. I have to do this for my kids. They put everything on their calendar, but free time is important too. Me time, self-care time is important. Otherwise, we fill time on our calendar up with other tasks. So make sure you put your free time, your self-care time on your calendar and keep it. Don't give it up. Don't be deprioritize yourself. Remember, you are important. Your energy cycle is part of your personal productivity. Keep your needs scheduled on your calendar. So let's talk about some energy uh, and how we use our time. So one thing is think about how much time it takes to do particular tasks. I know that if I just take a task in general and sit down, I'll do it and I'll work on it if I don't have a time limit and I can end up stretching it out. So what I do now is I have, if I have to, for example, finish a report that I'm working on, I'll decide, you know, I think I need about a half hour for this. Because if I don't set a time limit, I can easily sit on a project for two hours and keep going. But if I know I have a time limit where I need to check in with myself, I will use my time more productively. So I suggest that you set deadlines for yourself. And if you get to the end of that deadline, end of a half hour, for example, and you haven't finished, you can do one of two things. 
you can it doesn't mean that your project is done that's all the time you have you may decide you know what I have more time I think I can finish it up in 10 more minutes or you may decide I'm really not done I want to schedule another half hour tomorrow but again keeping assessing your time with your project is really helpful and helps you be responsible to your time so that you don't keep expanding time. It's so easy if you don't have a time limit to be limitless in allotting time to activities. And similarly, I want you to think about time where you do schedule things. We usually schedule in increments of half hour or an hour or 90 minutes. If you schedule a meeting, we usually schedule 30 minutes or not or an hour or 90 minutes but what if you just need a brief meeting with somebody maybe you only need 10 or 15 minutes if you schedule a half hour's worth you can fill that up or what about instead of an hour 45 minutes or what if you schedule 40 minutes if that's what you really think you need and then you'll have extra, an extra five minutes for the 45 to take a little rest break what if instead of 30 minutes, you schedule 25 minutes, and then you'll have five minutes to transition to your next activity? Little cushions between activities, either if you schedule 25 minutes and just have a few minutes to spare, or schedule 30 minutes and give yourself a little cushion, can give you time to transition, can allow your brain, it takes our brain time to move into our next activity, can keep your stress level down. And when your stress level down is down, that really contributes, it helps your personal productivity. So I want you to think about things like that that you can do that really don't waste time but save your personal productivity. And also when you're planning an agenda, just because something has been on the agenda of a meeting forever, think about whether it still needs to be there. For one of my groups, we've always had our finances on our agenda. And every time the person in charge gets up, talks from the beginning to the end on what's been done. And I suggested, what if we send that report out in advance? Everybody gets to look at it, and we'll go over a brief review and some questions and answers. And that has saved us a significant amount of time by doing that, because we don't necessarily have to review everything from the beginning to the end. It's really easy and faster for mo most of the people in this group and many groups to quickly go over the elements that are mostly repetitive and we're just looking at the numbers instead of getting everything repeated with every number each time. And that's just an example. There are numbers of things that we do repetitively that we don't necessarily need to do. So think about that. Um, and th think about all ways in your work that you might be able to take little breaks, cut time. Even if you cut five minutes here, 10 minutes here, you've saved, before you know it, you've saved an hour. And I want you to think about this with time hacks. Don't minimize the five minutes or 10 minutes here or there, because they all add up. Before you know it, you have an hours, you have half a day. And over a month, that adds up. All of those times add up. If you want to be a high achiever, high achievers are really masters of the way they utilize time. And I talk about high achievers. So with my clients, I have a high achievers club. And we talk about a whole bunch of skills and strategies that people who are successful use um, to become successful. Time management is one of them. We also talk about reaching goals and many other elements as well. Um, if that is 
of interest to you, my High Achievers Club, you are welcome to schedule an appointment with me. If you'll have questions about time management techniques and hacks and facts that we talk about as well, um, I'm happy to have a conversation with you. You are welcome to look at my schedule, which will be in the calendar, which it'll be in the comments here. I will try to put the, it in after we finish uh, as well. So I want you to think about your relationship with time and your energy cycles and the relationship of time of people you work with. So do you tend to be a person who's on time and the people who you work with, are they on time or are there people you work with or people in your family who are always late? Um, do you say, I work well under stress and you put yourself under stress and do you think that helps you? What would happen if you work with your, your comfortable energy cycles without stress? Would that help you with your personal productivity over time? Do you really want to work under stress or do you not have the skills? Do you not know, do you not have confidence that you'd get things done if you didn't have that stress pushing you? What about another classification? People talk about being a morning person or about being a night owl. And I also talk about, because I've worked with so many people on this, I also talk about afternooners. Some people are not morning people, and they don't love being up like owls late at night, but they peak in the afternoon. That is their energy cycle. So I'd like you to think about your personal energy cycle when you feel most productive. For me, I am not an early morning person, so when I first get to work, I don't like to do my most important job. For some people, that is the thing to do because they are at their utmost energy level and focus level at first. For me, I like to ramp up a little bit. I like to start with something simple and my second activity of the day is going to be my most difficult, my most important task. And that is one of the ways that I rule my time, that I win my time in my days. I know what my energy level is like. I know when to have a snack. I know when to take some deep breaths and take a break. I know when I have a stressful day, when there's a stressful issue. I know how to handle my energy. And that's one of the things that we do talk about in the High Achievers Club. Handling stress, handling energy, handling challenges. So again, I'd like you to think about that as well. Um, and I'd like you to think about the big drainers that really pull from us. Again, how often we check our emails. It could add up to hours in a day. Again, there's a study that says that, that the average of a group of people they looked at to 2.6 hours a day. That's almost half a day. It was split up over the day. But is that how you want to spend half of your day? And if you're really not certain how much time your email takes up, you can audit it. Keep a piece of paper and each day over the next week, write down the time. Every time you go to check your email, write down the time. And when you go back to your work, write down the time you finish. So if it's 9, 10 in the morning to 9, 20, make a record of that. And by the end of the week, you'll have some idea of how frequently and how long each day you're on your emails. The other thing is another time drainer is off. We often answer our phone every time it rings and then you're responding to another person's time needs. Of course, unless it's your family, your kids, and you need, or your boss, you need to answer a phone. There are times when for your personal productivity, it's more efficient for you to finish up whatever project you're doing 
and then return a phone call. And another big time drainer, a big time waster is multitasking. As busy people, we're lured into it. We're tempted to multitask and we think, well, I have to do a million things during the day, so I'll just do a whole bunch of them at once. But what happens is that with that is it increases our stress. It decreases our focus because we're going back and forth. It makes our brain go back and forth in our topics, in our tasks, and that loses time. And the stress makes us lose time efficiency as well. So for most people, and they don't even real it, realize it, many people say I'm great at multitasking. But if you do some auditing, multitasking is a big cause of stress, cause of errors, and a decrease in efficiency, a decrease in personal productivity. So think about how you use your time. Do you focus and really put your energy into one task? Or are you trying to do lots of things at once and not getting much done on any one particular issue and going back and forth? Get one thing done and then the next thing and the next thing. That is personal productivity. And that is time comfort, not time stress. When I talk about time management and how we handle time, I want people to feel in control of the time so that, that they feel comfortable with the time. I don't want you to live a stressful life because people who live with stress are not usually high achievers. High achievers have learned to handle and manage their time so that they use it well, they're highly productive, and they are successful and happy as a result of all of the strategies that they're able to apply. So today I've been able to give you some general strategies. If you would like specific ways to, to implement steps in your life, with your family, with your work, I'm happy to have a conversation with you. If you are interested in joining my High Achievers Club, I am happy to have a conversation with you on how you can up your game. Everybody can be a high achiever. All you need to do is to know the skills and the tools that can raise you and elevate you to become that higher high achiever that we can all become. So again, I am so delighted to have all of you here. Um, I am so excited to in, really to invite you to think about how you handle time and to remember that it's not, although we say time management, time is 24 hours for all of us. What can you do to implement time management strategies to make your time effective, to keep your energy levels going through a productive day and a productive week and a productive month? and to clog up those time drainers. And there are other topics that I talk about that are really related to time as well. So those of you who are in my group and in my High Achievers Club know, I talk, know that I talk about boundaries and setting boundaries gracefully, learning boundary scripts and learning to say no gracefully and in a caring way, not being afraid of boundaries because it's important to be able to say no, people will always come to us and ask for our time, our expertise, our help. And many times we wanna say yes, but often we wanna say no, and we say yes because we feel responsible to others. So there are ways of saying no politely and gracefully that I talk about and habits are so important. Habits are what we do in our life repeatedly that can make our time more efficient or can make us inefficient. T habits is really a complete other topic that I talk about as well. Um, 
if you'd, again, if you'd like to talk to me about your time skills, feel free to make an appointment with me. I'm happy to talk about that. Habits and habits that you can implement to up your personal productivity can make a huge difference in what you accomplish and how you accomplish it, whether you use your time with stress or whether you feel comfortable with your time. So again, I'm so excited to see everybody here. I really encourage you to think uh, as you look back on this, what are some of the things you can do to preserve those 24 hours in your day to effectively keep up your energy in your day so that you don't feel tired or lethargic so that you can make it through your day with a good level of personal productivity. And where can you clog up those time wasters so that you too can say that you mastered your time, that time management is a good tool, a strong tool in your toolbox of being a high achiever. Again, I'm delighted to see you all here. I'm going to ask everybody, I almost forgot to ask, do you like the necklace I chose for today? Um, I had a bold red sweater and blouse and I thought I need some bold pearls for this today. So that is what I chose. Uh, I would love for people to make some comments. Again, as I always say, building community is important. So please say hello to everybody in the group if you're here with me, whether you're here live or on uh, replay. Please say hello to everybody. I hope, uh, if you'd like to say, I hope your time this weekend has been a good time. If you'd like to tell us something important you did this weekend, so that we can either congratulate you or comment for you, please do. Uh, if you want to make a comment about my necklace, I always love to see comments about what people think about my necklace. So again, I wish you a great time this week coming up. I will see you here next Sunday at our regular time with another topic. I don't know what it is yet. Uh, I always have ideas, but sometimes in the, in the phone calls I have with people who I speak to, sometimes with the questions I come up with another, my next topic as well. So again, I look forward to seeing you here next week. It is always a joy to share topics of success. We will consistently be talking about topics of success. And if you'd like to apply them to you personally, feel free to be in touch with me. I can't wait to speak to you again.